All right, all right. So we got a pretty cool problem today. Let's get started. Our statement reads, two long coaxial cylindrical metal tubes, inner radius A and outer radius B, stand vertically in a tank of dielectric oil, susceptibility chi E, and mass density rho, not charge density. The inner one is maintained at a potential V, and the outer one is grounded. To what height H does the oil rise in the space between the tubes? So, taking a look at our uh, diagram, we see that we have the oil on the outside, inner radius A, outer radius B, uh, B is grounded, A is at V, and we're curious at what height this will rise in the presence of an electric field, of course. Things to know. The force on this, uh, the dielectric material, uh, given that we have an electric field there, is equal to 1 half V squared uh, times the change in capacitance over the change in height. So for our solution, our first step is to find the capacitance as a function of the height h. So if we use a Gaussian surface uh, for each of the cylinders, we know that the air part leads to an electric field of 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught s, and therefore taking the integral of this electric field, we can find the potential is equal to 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught ln divided by a versus the oil part, which we need to find the electric displacement via the Gauss's law, is equal to 2 lambda prime over 4 pi s, uh, then divide through by the dielectric constants and permittivity, and we get E equals 2 lambda prime over 4 pi epsilon s. Again, with the integral, we get the potential is equal to 2 lambda prime over 4 pi epsilon uh, ln of B divided by A. Let's note that lambda over epsilon naught is equal to lambda prime over epsilon. Therefore, solving for lambda prime, we get epsilon over epsilon naught lambda, and we know that epsilon is epsilon r times epsilon naught, so the epsilon naughts cancel, and we get epsilon r, or the dielectric constant, times lambda. Makes sense. The total charge, then, is Q equal lambda prime h, because that's where the dielectric fluid is, uh, plus lambda, and then the height difference is just L minus H, where L is the total length of the uh, tube. Uh, so subbing in these relationships, uh, we see that we get epsilon R lambda H plus uh, lambda L minus lambda H, and then we just factor out a lambda. Then we do an inner factor of H, and we know that we have uh, the dielectric constant minus 1, which is just the electric susceptibility, chi E, and therefore we have the term in the bracket. Uh, that'll be easier to substitute in. Um, so the capacitance is thus C over QV, and we know what Q is, we just found it. We know what V is, because we found it the slide before, and we see we have a lot of cancellations. Uh, lambda cancels with lambda, which is great since we don't know what it is. Uh, the 2 in the uh, numerator of the potential just cancels with the 4 in the denominator, thus leaving us with a capacitance of 2 pi epsilon naught uh, times chi E H plus L, all, all over ln of B over A. Our next step is to set up a sum of forces equations to find the equilibrium forces of this particular setup. Uh, we have an upward force of the field on the dielectric oil, and uh, we also have the downward force of gravity. Since we're looking for the equilibrium position, we know that the sum of forces must equal zero. Therefore, the force of the field going up minus uh, force of gravity equals zero implies that the field force has to equal the gravitational force. From here, it's just a matter of substituting in the correct things and applying them appropriately. Uh, we see in the purple we have dc over dh, uh, so taking the derivative of the capacitance with respect to h, leads to uh, this term here underneath, which we see we have the twos canceling. Uh, but the mass on the right-hand side in red is rho times the volume. Since we have a cylinder, we need the outer radius minus the inner radius to find the in-between uh, radius, and then multiply by h and pi for the fact that it's a cylinder. So geometrically, that's our volume. 
And then all that's left to do is to uh, isolate H and uh, cancel and simplify. Uh, this pretty quick and easy. The pi is cancel, and we're left with H equals epsilon naught chi E times V squared all over rho B squared minus A squared times G times the ln of B of A. Pretty freaking cool.